Here's something that I would consider to be a normal sized petunia. This is a very small flower petunia, very small. And this looks like a petunia, but it's a calibacoa. And this is related to petunias, but this is something that grows well in containers, but it wouldn't, doesn't really do well in the landscape. So this flower is actually smaller than a calibacoa flower. Typically calibacoas were smaller than petunias. To have such a small flower that would actually grow in the landscape uh, is kind of unique. There's a trend to make the calibacoa flowers bigger, more petunia-like, but they have more interesting patterns than a petunia. So we got a bigger flower on calibacoa, smaller flowers on petunias, just adding some different texture. Petunias will grow in a wide, wider range of areas, um, different soil types. Calipacoas are much more finicky. See, so what are some of the challenges with petunias in the past? If you get a really heavy pounding rain, you've got a big diameter flower, a really weepy looking flower as a result. You get a small little flower like this, it's less likely to go limp in a pounding rain. So smaller flowers, I think, are just a little bit more resilient to some extreme weather events, like pounding rains, than a large flower. I would say the different size blooms are useful for different applications and, and uh, we could use a small bloom like that as a filler, um, a very small filler in, in a mixed container as well. But this is going to maybe be more resilient to even soil pH um, and will do better than a calipicoa would um, just because you're not, maybe don't have to heat, feed it as much fertilizer Whereas with the calibacoa, you have to be a little bit more careful with that to make it bloom well all season long. But if you are careful with that, the calibacoas give you so much more choice as far as colors and patterns.